Okay, I'm just making sure everything kind of fits in my camera here. So this is a little different setup than I normally do. And um, on Instagram, I've been kind of filming vertically. So now you're getting an idea of when I film straight down, you'll be able to see kind of the palette. And I've got my turp jar here. And up here, I've got some white and black that's kind of hiding out. And I've got the paint in my paint box. And what I wanted to show you was um, this box that this is in. Let me just raise the camera up a little. Is one of those um, Masterson's Stay Wet palette boxes. And um, it comes with a blue lid that fits on this like a Tupperware. So if you want to keep your paint um, from drying out a little uh, slower, just um, put your, this is a glass palette. It fits perfectly in into this um, Masterson Stay Wet palette. Okay, so that's just sort of a little tip there on the side. And I'm using this um, gesso board today and we'll be painting the Oriel. And I think these are like, almond blossoms or cherry blossoms or something like that so yeah and let me just kind of fix my camera now to be a little more zoomed in on the painting there okay okay there we go uh, let's see Hi, Brad. Thanks for joining. Uh, I appreciate you joining the live stream here. Okay. So to start off with, I'm just going to, I have a pretty simple, I mean, it's very simple um, compared to some artists, the palette here. So I've got a white and black, titanium white, and I think that's just um, iron oxide black. And I've got yellow ochre, cad yellow light, orange, cadmium red medium. This is some permanent rose here. And I'll use that with the blossoms to make a nice pink. This is transparent red oxide, brown oxide. And I've got some viridian green. Um, this is some ultramarine blue and some cobalt blue. And this is some permanent magenta. Okay, so... I'm just going to start off by doing a little wash and a lot of, um, I have a lot of lessons like this on my Patreon channel. So if you like this lesson and you decided to try out more like this, just go to my Patreon. There's a link in my YouTube and you can join and paint all these bird classes, animal classes for 29 99 a month or a lot of these tutorials I do on YouTube I post there for ten dollars a month so you get a lot of learning at your own pace um, if you join my patreon so right now all I've got is a little bit of this transparent um, brown oxide just gonna just block that in and wipe off with my um, Viva paper towel and the there's no tricky mediums I just use in the beginning just some of that odorless mineral spirits to help the paint slide around a little easier and that gets rid of the white canvas which is always good to do helps to move things along for me and then later on, you don't have all those little white spots to fill in. So the next thing I'm going to do is, by the way, I'll edit this video and I'll add this reference photo in the top corner so that you can see it while you're painting. But um, the next thing I want to do is sort of sketch in where the bird and the branch is going to go. Hi, Marty. Good to see you. Oh, I have the glove. Brad's asking why I've got a glove on one hand. It's because this hand is where what I hold my paper towel with. And all the turp, when I, when I get turp on my brush, I wipe it like this. 
And I don't want that those um, chemicals going into my hands because by the end of it, you can see I already have. Yeah, so anyways, that's just something I don't want. One of my instructors, she had so much different paint chemicals in her blood. She said, guys, wear a, wear a glove. I didn't wear a glove for years, but she said she had cadmium, cobalt. She had like every chemical from the paint in her blood system. So that's my, that's my answer. I figured it was a good idea. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of mark off. I don't always think about things like framing, but started to get a lot of feedback over the years that people were frustrated because I'd put put my bird just too close to the top or too, you know, close to the side. So you got to kind of think about leaving a little space. So I make sure that I leave some space for the bird's um, head to fit in. So this is an Oriole we're painting. Um, I think it's kind of an East Coasty bird. Baltimore Baltimore Orioles is a team, so I don't really follow sports like football too much, but I know that's one of the teams. And it's, I just love this bird because of the color. So now we've got we got blossom space for the blossoms here. Kind of just you know doodle a little where those are gonna go. I like this branch so I want to make sure I put in that branch and sort of go along like that and feel free if you're watching to ask any questions or and if you are watching this after the fact you can leave me comments in in the comment uh, questions in the comment area so just going to block that in. Sort of blossoms everywhere, but I don't want to get too, too tight that I just want to make sure I'm happy with sizing of the bird. Kind of goes down. And kind of the angles. I'm really paying attention to when I'm looking at um, the bird, the different angles I see. Now I can kind of mark where the eye is a little bit higher up because his head's on a bit of an angle. He's looking up. And you notice I'm not getting into any of the details really. I'm just sort of making sure we got the right position and the size. And then you can't really see much of the rest of the bird in the reference photo, but I can imagine his tail's going to be coming down there somewhere. When you saw, I saw a lot of bird paintings, people, they like to see the tail somewhere, even though it's, even if it's not in the reference photo, sometimes I, I'll kind of put some bit of it down there. Okay, so now I've got um, sort of uh, everything marked off. I can look at the drawing a little carefully and see the beat comes a little further. But I'll, I'm better at just, you know, blocking in with the paint than trying to draw with my paintbrush. So I'm going to start to block in with... Um, so I'm really going to squint down when I look at my reference photo and see how dark this orange is versus this, how light this is. You really 
want to get that dark, um, warm, orangey color. So I'm going to get some orange and put it right into that puddle. And I'm going to get some of that transparent red oxide and a little bit of red. And I want to make sure it's nice and dark. Maybe I'll add a little viridian green just to take it down even more. So you can see it's getting darker. And I added a little more red. So there's some orange and red, the brown oxide, and a little tiny bit of viridian in there. And I just want to block in where I see the, from my reference photo, where I see the bird and where it's darker, sort of. You can always put the blossoms on top of the paint, so I'm not too worried about painting too much over it. And my tail that I can't see in the reference photo, but I'm putting a little bit of that down there. And with the dark shadow, there's some kind of a dark orange color up in here. I'm just going to put some of that in there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the that same, I'm going to use some of that orange again. And I'm going to go and just sort of work it into the edge of where that shadow and then the light comes in like that and just and then I'm going to go so there's nothing in there just just some orange and now I want to get that light sort of highlight in there so I'm going to use some of the Cad yellow, cad yellow light, and then I'm going to mix a little bit of that orange in there that I was using. Just sort of put, put that in there. Get a little more and Get a, you know, a little more light in there. And now I'm just going to switch brushes and move to a little smaller brush. And get some of that black in there. So I'm just going to block in with black and then I have a little bit too much paint there. And then we'll add some of the lighter shades of, of black on there with different colors. So where the light's reflecting on the bird's face and whatnot, we'll add some shades of kind of black that are a little more exciting than just black. But you could leave it just very basic like this and it would, you know, still be interesting. I like to make it a little more fun. Okay, so I've got, I always kind of want to see where that beak sort of has those little darker lines coming in to the beak. They're all kind of drag those over. And now for the beak, I'll get a little bit of white and little cobalt blue, kind of bring it into that black a little bit to get that grayish color. And I'll just kind of put a bit of that in there. So that's just some black, white, and some cobalt. 
Just trying to keep it simple. And then there's a shadow that comes underneath the beak that's quite dark. If you look, it's also got some kind of reflected light from the orange. So I'll just go a little deeper with the, I'll use some of that darker mixture here where I have just the black and a little bit of that white and I'll, I can add a little orange to it and I'll just put some of that in there. So now you see there's some values there. I can zoom in a bit. So you can see there's a darker value, a lighter value for the beak. And I'm just trying to block in and keep it pretty, pretty simple there. And I haven't really done any details on the eye, but I can take a little bit of that gray mixture and I'm using this little, this is sort of a round brush. See how this goes. I'm not certain this brush is in good enough condition for this kind of thing, but you want to just sort of, I use that just sort of outline where the eye is there. Just put in a little bit of that eyelid. Let me just zoom in so you can see a bit better. So I'm putting in just some of the edge here. And even you can put a little bit of that for the highlight here. Put a little bit of that gray and it kind of shapes the eye a bit and then get a little more white in that mix and get a little little light there. Um, so what do you use to thin your paint down? So um, I, I only use when I'm painting the Gamsol brand. I've got the jug here of this mineral spirits. And if I'm thinning my paint at all, which I don't, this is all thick paint here. Um, I only use it in the kind of the early stage. So I don't, the rest is just using it to clean my brush, but I don't really use um, anything else because I find it gets it, it just starts to get too mucky if I use like um, liquid or something like that. And then the paint starts to dry out and get kind of gunky. So I mostly, I only use that in the beginning stages. Some of that odorless mineral um, spirits. And then I basically kind of move on to the just just using the paint so this is a little bit of that brown oxide and I'm just uh, and a little bit of ultramarine blue to get some darker just some kind of lines in there and now I'm going to Get a little more. I'll just kind of finish the beak. I'll add a little bit more light to the top here. Just added a little more white to that mixture to get a little bit of a highlight on the beak there. Okay, so now for the kind of the, there's some greenery and some blossoms there. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of this permanent uh, rose, which makes a really pretty pink. And I can, I'm adding, I added a little bit of that turp to it. And I'm going to just kind of mark a few. I don't really, 
need to thin down the paint for this, but I'm just going to put a few of those little little cherry blossom buds in there and then I'm going to get some of that pink and some white and I want to make kind of a real light puddle and this darker puddle so I can sort of go back and forth a bit and if I squint down I see sort of a dark grayish pink color so I'm going to mix in a little viridian and brown oxide for sort of the shadow color of those pink blossoms they're, and they're a mix of pink and white so it's kind of a little bit tricky so I'm using a little viridian and a little bit of this brown oxide and that's creating sort of this grayish pinky color and maybe add a little blue so now you see there's this sort of dark tone that's sort of natural and I'm going to just put in some brush strokes that are kind of blossomy I don't want I don't want them to look super hyper realistic I kind of just want them to be there and so we know that, you know, the Orioles in a blossom tree, blossoming tree. So I'm just kind of blocking in with that darker tone of that pinky gray. And at this point, you know, you can kind of have fun with how, you know, you want to go about doing these flowers. I'm going to just put one down here. You don't have to do it exactly like the reference photo. So I'm just going to kind of time it with these three sort of boom, 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 and it will give it sort of a nice balance. And then you could put some, you could put some green leaves here, or you could, you could put maybe one or two going really abstractly off the edge here and here. But I like to keep the flowers more kind of loose. And you can just put a few of those in. And, and I'm thinking, you know, even the composition position here just sort of how it feels and everything you don't want to put the blossoms all in an exact row you know you want them kind of different heights and stuff like that okay so now I've blocked in some of that darker value of that pink um, I will sh go and add a little highlight to this one here so you can kind of see why you need to get that dark in there first to show those lighter pinks. But before I get going on the pink and get too, you know, you can get too tied into what everything, you don't want it to get tight. So you kind of want to keep blocking in. So I'm going to block in with some of this Viridian, little yellow ochre, little bit of this, um, you could use some of that brown oxide and I, I want to just put in some really loose leaves, loose leaves. <laughs> okay. So you'll notice I'm pushing down and kind of pulling up with my brush stroke there and get a little more viridian and that brown oxide and you can get some darker greens, lighter greens and just getting some of those green marks in there. And you could put in some here and there. This is where you can, you know, you have fun with all the different color combos, the pinks and the greens. 
I just love the just the way these colors look together. And again, the tails, you know, was there. It's it's in the in the photo. Um, not in the photo. It's sort of something I added, just some of that color. So you kind of know it's part of the bird, but you don't have to get it exactly. So I'm just going to keep doing that and putting those marks in like that. So you kind of finish it off at the end here. And you don't forget we're, we've got the background to put in, so you don't have to have it perfect. I like it to be really kind of loose for now. You can even take your, sometimes at this stage, I'll take a piece of paper towel and just sort of scruff up some of those marks just so that it even loosens things up a little even more. Magical paper towel. So now you've got sort of, when you smudge it up a little, it kind of combines some of these brush strokes and I'll see if I can get it closer for you. So it it kind of blends it in a way and um, it just makes it easier for you later to be able to, um, you can tighten some things up and keep some things loose. It just makes it easier to look more painterly and loose. And now I'm going to go and add some of those lighter, almost white, but they're still a bit pink highlights. So I'm adding white to that pile of um, permanent rows. And I'm gonna load my brush up so it's quite thick, the paint on there. And I'm going to kind of just make some of those highlights on some of the edges of those blossoms. So you can put some on the edges there. And this one has the most light because it's right up front. But again, I'm trying not to get too um, detailed. I really just sort of want to show some edges and a little bit of what's going on, but not overly overly detailed. And then you can take your brush and sort of blend some of those marks. You can just sort of work some of that in there and then go back and add some more of a highlight to some. So you just sort of, it takes a little bit of work, but once in a while, um, you just sort of tighten things. Sometimes you loosen things when you're getting, adding a little bit of pink to those. And you can you can kind of just go with your gut. And some sometimes it helps to look at old paintings that you painted to see what you did and what you liked about some of your old paintings and then don't forget to do it to, to your new paintings because sometimes I'll look back at my blossoms and they're like basically almost just marks and I'm like oh wow and that looks better than to me than going overboard with the blossoms so sometimes just even a mark here and there like this where you can kind of just get almost like a feeling of a flower but it's not really the flower is almost more fun. So those are pretty loose. Now we've got these little guys down here. I'm just going to add a little brown oxide 
to this white and permanent rose mixture and put a bit of a just some kind of light hitting those edges there and some shapes so they're not just they don't look like berries <laughs> and then I'll just sort of sweep my brush over them a bit and you can use a fan brush or you know whatever works for you to soften up your your paintings and then there's the little seeds in the center so I see sort of a green I'll get some of that yellow ochre and maybe add a little bit of that green mixture into it and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that darker greeny yellow in the center there and maybe right here there's a few little of, you know seeds and then to make them stand out I'm going to add a little bit of this cad yellow light and just sort of dab you can add a little bit of that light mixture in you can get some more white in there see then you can kind of see some of those little seeds in in the middle of those two but again I don't want to Trying to keep it simple, which is not not e always easy. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red into that into the feathers down here, just some of that cad red, and then a little bit of it's kind of in that mixture that had the red oxide and the orange, just to really deepen. The feathers that are in the shadow down there. There. Okay. And then I added some highlights on to the the blossom, but I didn't really do anything to the leaves yet and that's where we can make make it even more fun so I'm going to add some of that cad yellow light and a little dab of viridian and I mixed it right into that um, puddle of green and I'm going to add some lighter green um, brush strokes in there to those leaves those leafy marks. You can just add a few shapes that are, you know, make it interesting. You can add, a, I, I'll sometimes add a few lines like that are light green, like to show these little stems that go off to these, you know, seeds and whatnot. It's just more, uh, Kind of like I'm thinking of interesting shapes to go rather than leaves. I'm thinking more of like just shapes. And then and then you can up up it a little. You can get some more viridian. I also like to change the greens I use as I go so that's not all one green so I'll, I could add and make a cooler highlight using adding a little more viridian to that mix you can see it kind of almost takes on a bluey green and add a little you know little highlight here and there of of that So now you've got a little dash of everything going on there. Let me zoom in so you can see. And you you create sort of more of a, almost like an action versus kind of just leaves sitting there. They're kind of moving with the, there's sort of like a more of a rhythm to it than it's just all one thing happening perfectly. I, I want it to be loose. 
So now for the background, um, in the reference photo, it's very kind of, you know, it's all grayish white. So you could go with a color, like I sometimes will just make it a, like a blue sky behind it or a bluey gray color. So I'll go with something like that. So I'll just get some white, a little bit of cobalt blue. And you can try it out because there is this that brown oxide on the, the canvas already. It could kind of blend a little and dull that blue sky. So you can make sure your brush is clean though. I was, my brush is a little bit dirty, so I gotta change it, gotta wash it out a little. I'm a little bit, sometimes I get a little bit um, distracted when I'm painting and talking, so I forget some of the things I normally, and I've added a little bit of that turp to it, so if you're wondering why the paint's kind of gliding a little faster, I didn't mean to do it, but it actually kind of helps, so I'm just going to work that light grayish blue color in, and you can get some different values of it, darker values. I might put in some more co I mix some cobalt blue in there if you're wondering. And I'm cutting into the leaves now to shape the background a bit. And then I'll probably soften some of those marks. But it, it looks interesting when you do that. So I'll cut out around these little berries and that gives them a sort of interesting look. And it really makes the bird stand out, this color. Kind of that orange against the blue, bluey white colors, nice. Well, hello there. I see uh, Anita. Hammond, hello, and thank you um, for that compliment. I like birds. I love painting them. Mostly because for the longest time I just painted flowers. And then I started trying birds and it was like a whole new, to me, almost like painting a flower again, but something that was alive. So just to be able to paint something that's as colorful as a flower, but is um, they got their own personality and kind of makes it kind of fun. Okay, so now I may have to switch to a smaller brush, but you kind of shape those, some of those um, background into the branch there. You might even um, add a little more cobalt to that mix and a little, little bit of that red oxide to gray it a bit. As I go down here, I don't want it to maybe be as bright as the sky up there. So it kind of changes a little bit. And you can pop a bit of that sky in there with the darker kind of gray blue mix. Put in a bit of some of those sky holes there. Okay, now we've got the background in, but I want to loosen some of the bird because now the bird looks like it's cut out and I'm liking this better because it's looser, but the bird looks almost like too tight. So I'm going to, 
I'm just going to dry my brush off. I might go, I could go back to my orange paintbrush that I was using earlier. Doesn't really matter. Get a bit of that light orange off the bird's chest and kind of dab it on the edges a little to loosen it up. I can also take a little bit of that darker edge and just sort of um, cross over. My brush is kind of on the background and kind of on the bird and that will soften the edge a little. Or I can just drag some of that across like that here and there. So if there's, a, there's different ways you can do it. If you're worried about getting too much um, messing up the edge too much, you can just go along the edge and make kind of a feather motion like that. And then if you say, oh, that's, you know, too many feathers, you can always go back and make sure your brush is clean and get some of that background color. And you can, you know, kind of soften some of those edges again. And sometimes I'll just drag a few in the front there. Let me zoom in so you can see. Um, you can just sort of uh, drag some of that paint over the edge a little. And you'll get those feathery marks. And if you go like this and you say, well, that's way too much. I don't like that. Just go... Just go back and get your white and your cobalt blue and just go back and back again. Just kind of take it away. There. And then it's kind of, you've softened it off again. And I can soften some of these leaves. I'll, I'll just drag some of that green over into the background, some of the pink. And then um, I'm going to go back and add a little highlight to the bird's face. So his face is kind of in the dark. So I'm just going to get some of this blue. Zoom out a bit. I'm mixing in where I had that black and cobalt and white up here to make a bluey gray color. And I'm just going to put where I see some light on his little cheek here. Just with a blue, black, and a white, you can make that sort of. Let me zoom in so you can see. And soften the edge of the beak a little. So now I'm I'm looking at the edges of everything and put a little bit of that highlight up on top of the head there. And I'm looking at where can I make his, um, just work on some of the feathers now, like softening the edges of the feathers. I've softened a lot of the background and the main parts. Now I can start looking at some of the little details, like in here, I could, you know, soften that edge here a bit by dragging some of the black feathers in. And then I could pull some of these orange feathers over. So you kind of push and pull some of that. Same with here. I'm going to drag some of that black in. Just so now you've, it looks more, you know, less, less rigid. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this cad yellow light to that orange mixture. I really want to get a, a nice highlight, you know, that's kind of right here. There's, there's a nice highlight there. Little, just a little brighter. 
and then a few of these feathers that come out here are, are lighter, catching the light. And if I put too much paint, just sort of make sure you you dry your brush, but you can soften that edge if you don't like it. You know, if you did, if there's something you do and you, it's just too eye catching, you you can just soften it by using the edge of your brush, and then. Down here, I'll soften this a little. Okay, so now I'm going to look at what else can I bring out in this painting. So I'm going to add a little more white and cobalt blue. And I'm just going to add a, a bit more paint onto the background here. Just to kind of give it some texture. It just looked too flat to me, the background. With all the texture going on here, I just kind of want it to have a little more going on there. And then I'm going to go back to my pink and just add some paint on top there. And I might even add a, just some random pinks to the background just for fun. So I could take some of this pink and put a little bit of it into my sky mixture or vice versa, sky mixture into the pink to kind of create a similar hue. And I'll put a few marks in the background just so that there's sort of the colors kind of spread around. But you don't really, it's not something you really even think about, you know, it's just there. And then I just want to look at the values one more time and add a few um, hits of something dark down low because I've got the just anything that's like add the green and then add a few like brown oxide, ultramarine, blue, something to darken that green and really punch in a few really dark um, greens in there just so you get a little more again just another shift into adding a little more depth in the painting a little more texture here and there so also it helps to balance out how dark I feel how dark the birds you know, head is on there. So it kind of adds a little bit of dark going through. Okay. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. I'm just reading the comments. Yeah, no, I, I'm don't, I don't dispose of the turp right away. I use it a few times before and, um, I don't like to, I really dislike using turp at all, so I hardly um, use a lot. And then when I do get rid of it, I usually go to like the very corner of my property and put it like in some rocks or something. I don't want it going down the sink or anything like that. So, and if I'm at the school, I'll use their chemical dispenser thing that you can dump it in. But anyways, I think that that's um, kind of the basics. That's kind of it. Um, so like I said before, if you're watching and you're not a member of my Patreon channel, you can join. And I have lots of full length um, lessons just like this one that you can watch and follow along on your own time. 
And thank you for watching. Uh, thanks, Marty, for coming. That was nice that you could come and watch. And thank you, uh, Brad, for joining for the first time. And I uh, look forward to doing more lives. I've been doing them on Instagram, but this is a, easier on YouTube to show you the whole palette and the painting versus Instagram has that vertical sort of you can barely fit anything on it. But anyways, um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. And I'll see you in the next video real soon. Thank you.